Hi, this is Annie Fox for Family Confidential, Secrets of Successful Parenting. My guest today is Alice Lin of the Imagination Foundation. Imagination Foundation is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to find, foster, and fund creativity and entrepreneurship in kids around the world, to raise a new generation of innovators and problem solvers who have the tools they need to build the world they imagine. Hi, Alice. Welcome to Family Confidential. Hi. Nice to be here. <laughs> well, I love the little critter that's sitting over your right shoulder, and it's perfect because today we'll be Thank talking you. about kids, creativity, and imagination. And I know you work for the Imagination Foundation, so can you tell me a little bit about what the heck that is? Sure. Um, the Imagination Foundation is a nonprofit, and our mission is to foster creativity and entrepreneurship in kids around the world. And um, most people's introduction to it is through a movie called Kane's Arcade that came out in 2012. And basically it's about a boy in East L.A. that built a cardboard arcade in his dad's um, auto parts shop. Wait, hold on and a second. He, he built what? Slow down oh. a little bit because <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I've seen the movie. I've seen the movie. It's awesome. But I think most people who are listening right now have not. He built a cardboard arcade in his dad's auto parts shop. Is that correct? Exactly. So it was... How did he uh, do that? He was really resourceful and, um, you know, had to find a way to, like, pass time during the summer. So his dad's auto parts shop had boxes lying around and Kane loved arcades and he just decided he was going to build his own arcade. Um, but it was very elaborate and, you know, a lot of touches that I don't think most of us would think of. <laughs> no electricity, right? No electricity. It was all very hand wrought, lots of duct tape, lots of um, packing tape, all kinds of boxes. Um, I don't want to ruin too much of the oh, okay. movie for no, people. Spoiler but... alert. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, so we're going to ask people to check out Kane's Arcade. So um, there's this kid who's done something pretty amazing and right. with, with just everyday objects, cardboard, scissors, tape, maybe some markers. And um, fast forward a little bit to the Imagination Foundation from that video. Okay, so basically the video was put online and then all of a sudden people were paying attention. And I should mention that there was a little um, scholarship widget. It said, think of what Kane could do with an engineering degree. And oh, when people yeah. saw the video, um, they kind of went nuts. And, you know, it awakened something, I think, in most viewers, like, oh, this is, this is what childhood should be about and seeing a kid who's creative and seeing that he had a place to um, express his imagination and that he just had an idea and he went for it um, really inspired people. And also, I should also mention, it's a complicated story. That's okay. We got time. <laughs> Go for it. Okay. Um, Nirvan, the founder of our foundation, basically walked into this auto parts store one day and came across Kane's Arcade. And... Oh basically was taken by Kane's creativity and was just really amazed and decided to invite hundreds of people to come down to the arcade and surprise Kane um, because he had had no customers up until that point. Oh, no, um, no one was lining up for the arcade? No, nobody knew about the arcade because they were going to the auto parts shop to buy auto parts shop. I mean, auto parts. So um, <laughs> basically, Nirvan was there to buy a door handle and just stumbled upon the arcade. Um, so long story short, he surprised Kane with, you know, a community flash mob and um, then made a film about it. And this is the film that became Kane's Arcade and kind of took the world by storm and led to our foundation. And as you said, the, the mission statement of the Imagination Foundation is to foster creativity and entrepreneurship in kids. Did I get that right? Exactly. And so... What is it that you do now to, to um, fulfill that mission statement? How are you reaching out to kids and saying, hey, this is what childhood ought to be about. Here's some cardboard, tape, and scissors. Well, I would say that actually we reach out to kids through our mostly adult volunteers. Um, you know, one of our big initiatives is the Global Cardboard Challenge, um, which came kind of very organically and naturally out of um, the public's reaction to Kane's Arcade. So kids or parents or teachers would see the movie, and then we were getting letters about 
you know, kids just taking boxes and sort of suddenly building something in the kitchen or um, teachers decided to do arcades in their classrooms for a building project or to teach engineering or, you know, other science concepts. And um, we decided that, you know, like the stories we were seeing and the videos and the pictures were just amazing. We decided to put out a call to action, like, let's invite the whole world to do this. Um, and so we've done it two years in a row and in the fall will be our third year. It's the Global Cardboard Challenge. And basically it's an invitation to kids to build anything they can or want to out of cardboard, imagination, recycled materials. Um, so that's one of our big initiatives. And this year we're going to be rolling out imagination chapters and piloting it in about 30 different places. So we're really excited about that. What's an imagination chapter? So imagination chapters are basically, you know, clubs, I would say, or groups. Um, but it would probably average about 20 kids per group, and they'll meet with adult facilitators um, and, you know, build something out of their imagination. So it could be a two-hour session where you're working on something, but, you know, as projects get more elaborate, um, kids will work on maybe tackling problems in their own community and coming up with solutions to, you know, something in their neighborhood that, where they see a need. Um, so it's very open-ended, a lot like the Cardboard Challenge, but... The reason that we're really excited about the chapters is the Cardboard Challenge has been amazing. And all the feedback I get, because I get to talk to a lot of the organizers, mm -hmm. teachers and parents, they're always like, oh, this was one of the most amazing months or amazing days um, that I've witnessed. Like we saw kids get so engaged and excited about learning and parents got involved. And, you know, there was just such spirit and community and joy around learning. Um, and we just wanted to figure out how do we take that, um, that learning and that spirit and have that, you know, be something that's in kids' lives regularly. Yeah. Because, you know, you need to practice creativity. Kids are naturally creative. We kind of all are. But without practice, it sort of stays in a certain place. And we feel like, you know, we want to play a role in empowering communities and just kind of ordinary citizens, people who care about this to... Um, make something happen for kids, give them the opportunity to create. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, I'm seeing a whole lot of different ways that this can benefit kids. I, I, I see the idea of it being solo tech, which mm -hmm. I love personally, um, to be able to say, okay, there are fun things to do that don't have to do with the screen. And right. I can use my hands. I can get together with my friends. I can build stuff and take an idea from its inception to an actual physical thing. And right. in, Kane's, in Kane's case, invite people to play with my idea, actually, in the real world. Mm -hmm. All that's amazing. The idea of the engineering thing, I just love that. Um, mm -hmm. and, and to foster in kids the um, sense of confidence that they can do things and actually be problem solvers. Wow. All of this is is pretty awesome and the fact that we're dealing with materials that are found materials and things that most kids are likely to be able to find or have mm -hmm. access to very easily there's no barriers to anyone getting involved in this so summer's coming yep and um, it's getting hot already it's, it's getting, getting hot early. yeah and i'm thinking <laughs> okay kids in school usually have very very fixed and, and stratified curricula, steps that they go through. And, and teachers need to stay on task so that they can be accountable for the kids learning throughout the school year. But then the bell rings on the last day of school. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, I really hope, that kids have time during the summer to mm -hmm. kind of relax and uh, get away from what I call capital T, capital S, the schedule, uh -huh. and have some open-ended play time. So I want right. to ask you, Alice, it's like, mm -hmm. what's going, okay. what's going on with um, the Imagination Foundation? And you told me that the, the, the cardboard challenge, the international cardboard challenge isn't until the fall. Do you guys have something for kids um, or just some ideas to throw out there for parents and um, youth leaders for kids mm -hmm. and the summer? Okay. Let me think about this. Um, <laughs> Yeah, because as soon as you said summer, I started thinking about the things we'll be doing to gear up for the Global Cardboard Challenge and to bring out the chapters. But let me think about what I would tell parents with kids and tell kids. Mm -mm -mm. What were your summers like as a kid? 
As a kid, you know, I was such a nerd. I loved school so much. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> I really loved school、um, as a kid. So, you know, and it was so stimulating. Like, I went to a really great school that had a lot of open ended learning.、Um, so, I was pretty motivated. And I, I think I liked being around people a lot.、Um, so, summers I found a little bit long and a little boring. Okay. <laughs> But I read a lot in the summer and we would do swimming lessons. Um, we would take art classes. I had three other siblings, so there were four of us.、Uh-huh. Um, and we did have a lot of free time.、Um, it but sounds mostly. Like, it sounds oh, like, no, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say it sounds like that, that the lack of structure wasn't always a good fit for you because you really enjoyed all the stuff coming to you and the challenges of school. And I think this is, this is、um, very common. Kids、mm-hmm. say, Oh, yeah, great, no school. And then two or three weeks in, they're like, I'm bored.、Uh-huh. You know, <laughs> you know going, and, and parents, you know, not all of us are trained as educators or creativity specialists. And so、mm-hmm. I, think, I think it's really important for parents. I'm going to suggest maybe that they, with their kids, they watch the film, Kane's、mm-hmm. Arcade. How long is、yeah. the video? It's only 11 minutes. 11 minutes. And I've seen it. <laughs> Twice, and you know, it, it just it's inspiring, it's totally inspiring. So,、yeah. when you, I'm going to say to, to the people who are listening, when you sit down, before you sit down with your kids to watch this, have lots of pieces of cardboard around because、mm-hmm. as soon as this is over, they're going to want to build something, and you're、That's、going to、so、want、true. to encourage、so、that. <laughs> <laughs> How about the idea of making a mess? Was Kane's dad, ups, you know, upset with the space he was taking up in front of the parts shop? or... Um, let's talk about encouraging kids and supporting、yeah. their creativity. You know, I have to give kudos to George, that's Kane's dad,、um, because I think some parents wouldn't have let their kids set up shop in their actual shop.、Um, <laughs> but, but George gave him you know,、so、the room, you know, he gave him time and space to just build this really elaborate arcade.、Um, so I think that's, it doesn't take much. You just have to you know, recognize that if you give kids a little bit of a birth to express themselves、yeah. and to do their thing, they'll do pretty amazing things.、Yeah. Um, but you do have to be willing to relinquish a little bit of control you know, and let、yes. them be free. So,、um, so, so there's the idea that, of, of the space. And there's、mm-hmm. also the idea that there's no right way to do this. Yeah, it was definitely, Kane had a c o n c e r n Like a conception of what, what he wanted to do, and then he did it. And I feel like, you know, if I were to give kids advice during the summer, I would think like to avoid boredom, just at the beginning of summer, think about some of the things you want to do and some of the things you want to learn. You know, like、mm-hmm. even if it's as simple as saying,、um, What's one thing I wish I could do, and how am I going to learn it this summer? And then, like, make your summer a time where you really get to explore that. You know, read up on it, meet people that do the thing you want to do,、um, and do very crude versions of, you know, say for Kane, it was an arcade, but, you know, you could take a stab at whatever you're, you're sort of interested in. And, you know, no, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's the summer, it's your time.、Mm-hmm. Um, but I think identifying something you're interested in is. Really important, and then just deciding to make a project out of it. You and, know? and I would encourage parents to have that conversation with their kids at the beginning of the summer. And、mm-hmm. as, a, as a family, maybe make a short list of things that every person in the family would like to explore, learn more about, and or do. And that way, families can support each other, especially you know, if, if I'm eight years old and I want to go、mm-hmm. meet someone who、um, builds things out of wood. Uh-huh. I probably need my parents' support and guidance in how to reach out to those people. And so,、uh, the idea of a family helping each other explore and create and imagine、mm-hmm. together、um, that makes a really nice picture in my mind. <laughs> yeah, I like that, Annie, because、um, I think it's not just about you know, a parent sitting their kid down and saying, Why don't we make a list of the things you're going to learn this summer? But you know, by showing that they're sort of going to be going off on their own journey. You know, like it's much more encouraging, and you're kind of modeling the thing that you want your kids to do, you know? Yeah.、Um, and then I was thinking it could be an ongoing conversation for the, for the family to check in with each other、mm-hmm. and say, okay, you know, how are each of us doing with, with this learning, imagination, creativity goal that we set for ourselves three weeks ago? 
Right. And uh, yeah. that's that could be very empowering and bring the family together. And and the truth is, when one family member is learning about something, I bet you Kane's dad learned a lot mm-hmm. about arcades. <laughs> yeah, I think he learned a lot about arcades, but also just community because you you didn't really realize that. I mean, maybe we know, but it really demonstrated that people are kind of they have good natures, they have good hearts, you know, and when they see something they care about, they want to help, they want to be a part of, you know, goodness. So, especially when it has to do with kids, it's like, I think so. Yeah, yeah. it's a natural thing. Okay, well, um, this has been very creative and it has stretched <laughs> my imagination because you know what I'm going to do after this? I'm going to make a list. I'm going to talk to my husband, David, and to uh-huh. our kids too and say, okay, let's make a list before summer comes and each of us like, tell me, you know, let's share one thing we really mm-hmm. like to learn how to do this summer and or how to make. I think that would right. be a really, really fun thing. Um, so before we leave, I'd like to give you an opportunity to let people know more about uh, the Imagination Foundation, where they can find out um, what it is you do, the International Carver um, Challenge, the global. the global, maybe it will be the cosmic <laughs> at some point. <laughs> Don't leave those Martians out of this challenge. <laughs> Yeah, maybe maybe in a few years. Yeah, we'll, maybe. We'll um, food space. Yeah, so so tell us where we can find out more about what it is that you guys do. Um, you can go to imagination.is, which is um, dot .is, to find out more. We just actually came out with a new website Ooh, um, today. Ooh. So um, I'm really excited because... It has, you know, a lot of information about our programs, but also we're rolling out or we're launching the storybook project. Um, And basically it's stories from people we've met, you know, over the course of these two years as a foundation. And, um, you know, we've met some amazing teachers and parents and community leaders, mostly through the Cardboard Challenge, um, but also just through people writing in um, who are moved by the film or by our message. Um, And now it's sort of, you know, there's been a lot of attention given to Kane's Arcade, which is an amazing film for sure. Um, but I'm kind of excited to be sharing what you know other people in the community are doing. That's great. And so, yeah, check out the storybook, which is on the website. Okay, imagination dot is. We'll go mm-hmm. there right now and see, thank you. see your, <laughs> your new launched site. Um, thank you very much, Alice, for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank and, you. Um, I hope you have a lovely, creative, and very imaginative summer. I hope you do too. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Bye Bye-bye. This is Annie Fox for Family Confidential. To learn more about my work with tweens, teens, and parents, visit AnnieFox.com. And check out my book, Teaching Kids to Be Good People, Progressive Parenting for the 21st Century, available on Amazon, in print, and for Kindle. And tune in next week when my guest will be Dr. Kemi Oguntala, a.k.a. Dr. O, a.k.a. The Teen Doc. Dr. O and I will be talking about teaching kids empathy. Until then, happy parenting. (music) 